Hello, this is Tim Olson. In this video, we'll show the new constraint tools added into ViaCAD 2D version 11. Version 11 introduces a new tool palette via the Windows menu that exposes a user interface for managing constraints. Constraints are a way to tell lines, arcs, and circles how to behave using rules such as coincident, tangent, or concentric conditions. In addition, you can describe rules that control lengths and distances using dimensions. Overall, there are 15 tools in the constraint palette. The first tool applies horizontal, parallel, vertical, radial dimension constraints. The next tool creates auto constraints and the following do manual constraints. Lastly, there is the ability to animate a constraint by a dimension value. Let's jump in and start demonstrating using constraints in a simple example. Let's go ahead and create a rectangle and we will create a diagonal polygon rectangle using single line. And we're going to add some fillets to it. I'm going to shift in the corner to do an auto fillet. And we'll pick all corners to fill it. And now we'll go ahead and auto constrain. Auto constrain will search out common constraints such as horizontal, vertical, the little rectangle indicates a coincident constraint between the line and the arc, and then a circle about it indicates it's a tangent constraint as well. Next, let's put a dimension constraint. We're going to control the width of this rectangle with a dimension constraint between this endpoint and that endpoint, which is done with a shift key being held down. And again, we'll do a vertical distance between these two points. As such. Now when we click on these dimension values the data entry window will show the dimension value and let's change this to 10. You'll see everything is updated according to the new uh, distance. Likewise let's change this to 5. Alright now let's add some more items to be dimensioned. More constraints by creating a circle at the center point here and then holding down the shift key or the option key I'll copy that circle to these positions and let's go ahead and make these concentric. Concentric means they share the same uh, center point and we'll do that for all four And now if we go ahead and update this dimension value, let's change it to 8, you'll see the sketch updates accordingly. Let's add some more geometry. Let's uh, create an inside region. And we're going we're gonna to trim out the inside here using the trim tool. Let's get rid of that piece. And then we will go back to the trim tool or the uh, fillet tool and let's put uh, some small blends on these. Oops. We're going to do these inside corners. All right. And let's go ahead and constrain this using auto constraints. And I'm going to uh, hold down the shift key, select one of the curves and go to select chain. Alright, and so now we've constrained the inside of it. And let's go ahead and add an offset between these two points, these two curves. And we're going to put a quarter of an inch. Let's make that let's make that five. And a lot of these constraints you can go in, you can click on the constraint symbol, and it'll show you in the data entry window what that value is, and you can change it. All right, let's go ahead and make this the same. And likewise over here. And now what I'd like to do is make this circle concentric with this circle. So I'm going to select the constraint tool. And we'll go around to all four of those. All right, so there's our simple constrained sketch. And notice when you change one of these values, everything updates. All right. 
let's just go ahead and now let's go ahead and hide some of these constraints. Once you have a profile or a sketch constrained, the symbols are just cluttered in, in the way. And what you can do to quickly hide the constraints is go right click anywhere in the drawing and go hide all constraints. And then this will leave our, our dimensions on the screen for us. And let's do one more thing. Let's go ahead and put a let's put a hatch in our in our sketch area. And let's change that angle to 45 degrees. And update our dimension value. Let's update it to 10. Or let's go ahead and animate it. Let's animate our our value from starting at uh, 8 through uh, 14. We're going to put our start value at the dimension value. Here's the end value, 14. And we'll do, let's do 20 steps. And we'll hit play and hit and select the dimension. Okay, let's hit stop. And let's show one more feature about dimensions and that's the ability to define variables and equations. And we're gonna display our variables and equation dialog box. And it shows we have two dimensions. We have our width and our height. And let's go ahead and make our, our height a function of our width. And to do so, we'll change d2 value to be a function of d1. We'll make a d1 uh, times 3 divided by 4. Okay, and now if we go ahead and animate this, we'll see both values are, are changing. And let's do one more thing. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and add a attribute related to the area of our sketch using our attributes dialog box. And we're gonna put a 2D area onto our hatch. And I'm gonna create a bill of material and we'll place it below it. And we'll make it 12 pixels. All right. And now let's go ahead and animate our sketch and we can see how it impacts the CG and the area through the various different steps. Okay, that's it. Thank you very, very much for watching this introduction into constraints. If you have any more questions, come visit us at www.turbocad.com. Thank you very much.